What up world, welcome back to the channel. I have been doing the Village series and I'm loving it. We had the Village in the kitchen, the Village out and about working out with the kids and now we're coming with the Village show. And um, we know I've been putting up a lot of content on Wednesday. Every Wednesday, every week we have been putting up content. Today we decided to um, take a break from that, not just because we needed a break, but because of what's going on in our world and the climate of our world, and we decide to start our talk, start our dialogue. So, with that being said, you're going to have a lot of things coming from the Village Show. We're going to have interviews. We're going to talk about, um, you know, racism, politics, sports. You name it, we're going to cover it right here. We're going to have an open, honest, and transparent dialogue. I ask that you tune in, like, subscribe, turn on the notification bell, and lock in to the Village. Tremendous day, world. Hope all is super great and getting better. I am Corey Webster. Um, with everything going on in the world right now, um, the protests, um, the killing of unarmed black men in America, um, nothing is new. That has been happening for years now. And um, I just think we're in a new space as far as having a conversation, having a dialogue. So I want to make myself available so we can have those dialogues. Um, Drew Brees just came out and made a statement. Um, I don't agree with him, but I think, I know that's part of the problem. Um, I don't think that people are listening to understand, they are listening to respond. And I know it's very hard to take yourself out of the equation when you are talking about matters that may pertain and benefit others. It's hard to remove self. So um, I would ask that anybody that's um, listening to be open be honest and be transparent but i will also ask for everyone to listen to understand and not just listen to respond um, i think we missed the ball four or five months ago or even a couple of years ago with um colin kaepernick and i don't agree with everything that he has going on but he did peacefully protest and he said exactly why he was peacefully protesting and it was about the killing of unarmed black and brown in America and he talked about police brutality and we as a country we have a way of changing the narrative and we have to again stop that we have to you know listen to understand um, he was trying to tell you that that was a problem in America maybe maybe just maybe if we had listened to him we wouldn't be here today but we are so with that being said Drew Brees making those comments just yesterday about kneeling in the 2020 NFL season how it he would never disrespect the flag again that wasn't why Colin Kaepernick was kneeling so to change that narrative and to say that or to insinuate that that deems the problem and I think a lot of Americans feel just like Drew Brees and um, you know he talked about his grandfather being in the army and serving this country and that would disrespect the flag and things of that nature um, so if that flag didn't represent would it proceed to represent for all human and all mankind, why wouldn't it be okay to disrespect that flag? We once praised a Confederate flag, and that was our flag. And that flag is now deemed bad and racial. But at one time, that flag was waving and it hung high. And um, I don't want the same thing to happen with this stars and strike flag. Um, you know, we come 2080 or 2050 and we say that flag, more African-American people of color was killed under that flag. And now we're trying to put that flag to rest. So with all that being said, I think people are putting a Band-Aid on the problem and not getting to the, 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 the root of the problem. They're just putting a Band-Aid over it. Like, um, it's a bigger problem here, man. It's a bigger problem in America. And I, me, my personal perception is that 
until we changed the Constitution, because the Constitution was written in the 1800s, or b before any of this ever existed, right? So that's the foundation of America. We won't ever have an even playing field if we still go by that Constitution. Um, at one point in time, we were slaves, and that was legal in that Constitution. So until we can come together, and we can have everybody at the table, black, brown, white, black, purple, yellow, women, men, and have a dialogue so we can have some type of neutral ground that represents all race. And what I mean by all race is only one race, human race. Um, and we, you know, break down all those racism and all those stereotypes that have been put here for um, 400 plus years. We're going to always be right back at this area. For people that are grieving right now throughout the country and throughout the world, because we are seeing people unite all across the world right now. They had peaceful protests in other countries. And um, almost every state has been represented as far as protesting. Now, again, racism, it, it just didn't end in 1960s. It didn't end. Um, it evolved. And it evolved in many ways, um, systematic ways that we would never be able to just put a finger to. So the people that are screaming and yelling that the police brutality and the violence that's among police and black and brown people in their communities, the people that are yelling that those are just isolated incidents, you are part of the problem as well. You're not listening you're you're listening to respond and not to understand it's always going to be hard and i'm not pointing the finger at europeans or caucasians or white americans i'm not pointing the finger at you because these things was done before you um, i wasn't a person that can tell you everything about slavery and but i can tell you slavery has an effect on myself and everybody Vice versa, I think slavery have a true effect on you guys. Um, and I can't blame you and point the finger at things that was done before you. What I'm asking you to do is listen to understand. We see the world out of two set and different lenses. We don't see the world the same. We don't see America the same. Because to be perfectly honest and to be factual, America has done things for you that they did not do for me and my ancestors. And that's, uh, that's a big situation, a big emphasis amongst our two communities. And if we don't uh, be able to come to some type of neutral ground where we can understand each other and we can um, listen to one another, we're going to have this cycle continue to happen. And it's a rat race. You know, it, it happens, we, we protest, uh, and then we go right back to doing things. Uh, we find a distraction in things, and we continue to go on with our world. Well, now we have COVID-19 going, and you saw COVID-19 be just as bad to the black community as any other thing going on. And I know we like to say that, oh, that's a coincidence. It's not. It's not a coincidence. It's not a coincidence that... Um, even within the COVID-19, that the black community is dying, they're at more risk, they are, um, you know, part, they are more essential workers, they are more exposed to this virus. That is um, by design, by how the system works. So the system is not broken because the system works perfectly fine for the ones that has put it together. The system is not put together for me and a lot of african americans are smart and intelligent and understand the system and they understand the game so they know how to play by those rules and they know how to play the game but people are tired of it it's not good for me to be free and not my brother or not my sister we are not free until we all are free and i would ask my brothers and sisters my caucasian my european my white brothers and sisters 
to just listen and understand. Have a conversation. They have a, um, a challenge going on right now. It's called a great challenge. Watch movies that, that try to highlight these things. Not watch them to judge, but watch them to understand so you can see the world out of our lens. And not just to uh, respond and to um, be prejudgmental to whatever thoughts and, 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 and moral compass that you have been raised on for years. Um, I have personal ex experience with racism um, and, you know, Jim Crow is real. I live in, I'm from Louisiana, Vashon, Louisiana, and the Jim Crow rules and that is real. Willie Lynch syndrome, those are real. So you have, you know, been a part of a system that has held a certain ethnicity group back 400 plus years. It's time, it's time to remove some of those old ways of doing things and come to the table and have a dialogue. Um, me, my personal experience, like I was saying, we can know going into some of these schools around Louisiana, we see how they are represented. Uh, we see the lack of brown and blacks in a school. So we can know that they don't have, speaking from a sports perspective, the best coach. They don't have the best players. But when you go to play them at their own campus, it's going to be a dogfight. And we understand that if you're playing basketball, it's going to be maybe five against six or five against seven or five against eight. And we understand that and we prepare like that all year. So that's me telling my kid or that's my father telling me we have to be 10 times as better as a white school in order to beat them. That's privilege. Because the referee is going to call a game in your favor because you may not be as talented, athletic, or as good as we are. But because we at your home court advantage, you're going to have the referees on your side or whatever the case may be. You're going to sway. You're going to balance it off. That's not equal. And that goes to 1960. You can't give everybody slavery in and everybody equality in 1960 and think that now we're equal after you have held us down for 400 plus years. Again, it's just a conversation. It's a conversation that must be had. Um, one of my good friends, white, European, Caucasian, uh, told me that right now, those supporters, those people that feel that way, is going to be, they are dug in deep right now. They are holding on to it. And I feel like, because they feel it slipping away. If you only can be tall when somebody else is on their knees, you feel in that slip away right now. And that is a problem. If you can only be tall because you putting somebody down or because somebody else is on their knees and you feel good about yourself, that's the privilege. That's what we have to overcome and um, have those tough conversations when you're with your kids. And uh, uh, people like to say, you know what? Those racism kind of happened by default. I, I don't think it happened by default. I do, I do think it happened unconsciously because... It's hard for a person to take themselves out of it. So if you get a good job, it's hard for you to say that I got that good job just because of maybe the color of my skin. It's very rare that black and brown get those opportunities. And even if you have gotten it because of Whatever the situation may be, maybe you're an athlete, maybe you whatever, the, maybe you're friends with a certain person. You have to know how that feels. That's privilege. Privileges don't only come to whites or Caucasian or European. Some black and brown understand privilege as well. So I'm, I'm asking you to understand when those moments happen to you. And understand that certain people never get those moments. Never. So when Drew Brees say those things, I want him to understand that. You know what I mean? It's bigger than we appreciate with a person like Drew Brees and other individuals that have donated and did things like that. But that doesn't erase the fact of your moral compass. That doesn't mean you want everyone to be 
equal and free and you want equality for all just because you donate a certain or X amount of dollars. That has nothing to do with it. Your voice, using your platform in a positive way, and what I mean by positive, um, just for right, not for white, for right, for all people, can be, man, priceless when it comes to the dollars and cents that you talk about because you can save a country because you have that platform. Um, and for anybody, you know, the political world is a, is no, you know, it's a, it's, it's no escape from that as well because people use their own agendas to be able to continue to build themselves up when they're supposed to be working for the people. You're supposed to be in those positions to make your community, your um, whatever you're representing, your state, um, whether it's local, statewide, you know, uh, national. You're supposed to be working for the people, but I think that has got lost. And we can see that because people are looking for their own personal gain. Again, I tell you, it's hard to take yourself out of it. It takes true talent to be able to take yourself out of it and do what's right for the good and the great of all people. So uh, I've had those experiences. I've had those experiences as far as being a African-American man in South Louisiana and saw racism. And I've also had those experiences being a New York giant and a, a, a police officer may not know me until he see my ID, but he looks at me as an African-American man. He pulls me on the side to ask me why I'm in this neighborhood or um, why are you driving this type of car? And then when he realized, oh, it's the cornerback New York Giants, it's a different tone. But I know right then and there, that's privilege. Now, not that I was doing anything wrong. I was actually leaving a soup kitchen. We had just fed the homeless. The New York Giants had an event out there. And I was being profiled because of the type of car I was in. Two young black men in uh, a luxury car. And we got pulled over. And because I can understand my rights and know what's going on and I articulated it to him very clearly what he was doing he ended up giving me a ticket to justify why he stopped me he gave me a ticket for uh, I think he said not yielding to a pedestrian and us as blacks I never told that story before us as blacks individual we know it's not a fair shake when it comes to the justice system because it's a systematic problem not only in our justice system, but in every system we have across America right now. In our school systems, it just is what it is. Because the foundation of the problem has never been fixed. We have never touched it. So, um, as politicians, we make new rules. You know, we come up with a rule in 1806, but then we write a new rule in 1807 to protect us from that rule. We have to do away with those, with those type of decisions that have been made in the past. It's time to tell that constitution and start over from scratch because it wasn't written for everyone and it definitely wasn't written for black and brown. So um, I urge you to let's have a dialogue, let's have a, a meaningful conversation, a meaningful talk and I will be open, I will be honest, I will be transparent and hopefully you can do the same thing. I ask that you listen to understand not just listen to reply.